The other things that we have as part of furniture making is veneers. And we will tend to use veneers a lot within our furniture making. This isn't a cheap alternative for the solid timbers. When a forest is up for sale, one of the first timber buyers in there will be the veneer buyer. He will go through and select the veneers and the trees that he wants because he will get such a yield from that tree, he will pay more for the tree than perhaps the solid buyer will. This veneer is quite thick. This is an eighth of an inch, about three millimetres thick. This is a machine cut veneer, but thickness wise, this matches to as we would have had by a hand sawn veneer from 100, 200, 300 years ago. This is now what we call a constructional veneer. So we will use these for putting together to make bent chair legs or constructions that need to be strong but curved if we're not going down the lines of doing steam bending or another bending method. That one is an American black walnut. Quarter sawn so it's very, very straight grain. The rest of the veneers I have here are decorative veneers. These are only 0.6 of a millimetre thick or about a 30 second. Very, very thin and most of our veneers are now cut that thickness. So this one is a burr oak. We get close burr oaks and we want to use those for small boxes. And we also what we've got cat's paw oak, which is where almost the cats walked across. It looks like the cat's paws. That will work much better on big boardroom tables. Won't work so well in small boxes and can be difficult to lay. This one is a tropical olive timber. Again, very unusual. A lot of ripple within this one. So this can be quite difficult to lay. We're going to get some flattening before we can lay this. Otherwise, it will pop back up. But quite a distinctive grain in that one. This one's a satin wood. So you'll get this from Kenya and similar places to that. Beautiful. You get a real shimmer within this. Therefore, the satin wood name. This tends to colour down. Starts quite yellow and darkens up as age goes on. An unusual one again, this is actually white ebony. Very marbly effect that we get in this, but amazing what contrast we can have with our veneers. Another burr, this is actually magnolia burr, and it's a kind of green tinge to a timber, which is very unusual. And again, these can be really quite large sheets. This one is zebrano, so zebra-like. Very much the stripes come in there, dark and light. And again, it can be very, very attractive when perhaps put up against something like the wenge, that contrast we get can be quite stunning. This one is an ebony. So again, it's quite dark and quite straight grain. This one's been cut a quarter sawn, which means we get this very, very straight grain. Again, as veneers cut, it'll be cut a different way from the tree and we can get a much more cathedral looking grain. Different timbers look better, different cuts from the tree. Massa birch. Birch is a veneer that's used hugely in Europe for making veneers from. But this is a Massa birch and you get these lovely brown parts in it. They work very well as a contrast veneer with walnuts and get some great effects from that. A black chest wood, again, this one would be very difficult to lay because the amount of tension is in there. We need to get that flattened out through a, a process over a few days before we can start laying that one. This is a Vivona burr. This is taken from a sequoia, and this again is a beautiful, rich, pinky red burr. And again, this looks very nice against sycamores and those lighter timbers or maples possibly. And this one is a rosewood. This is a crown cut. We can see the actual cathedral shape coming out of that. And then we're getting some straighter grain along the outside of it. So depending where this comes from the tree, we'll get these various of shapes coming through. Veneers are not a cheap option for us. They're what we use within furniture. Use them alongside our solid timber. Solid timber where we need it. Veneer where we want fantastic detail and for bigger surfaces where we don't want to have the problems with timber movement over time.